Here are 50 detailed interview questions and answers for Android developer positions. Focusing on the most common topics that interviewers tend to explore. 1. What is the Android architecture? Answer. Android's architecture is built on layers that manage different aspects of the device. A. Linux kernel. This is the foundation. Handling core system services, such as hardware abstraction, security, memory management, process management, and the network stack. B. Hardware Abstraction Layer HAL HAL interfaces with the hardware of the device, providing standard APIs that the Android framework can use to interact with hardware components, like the camera or Bluetooth module. C. Android Runtime Art Replacing Dalvik in Android versions 4.4 and above, Art uses ahead of time AO and just-in-time JIT compilation to optimize app performance and battery usage. ART also facilitates a smoother garbage collection mechanism that minimizes application pauses and supports a wider array of platforms. D. Libraries Android includes a set of CC++ libraries used by various system components and services. For example, the Surface Manager for composing window layers, WebKit for browser support, and the media framework for playing and recording audio and video. E. Android framework. At this layer, developers interact with managers and services like Activity Manager, Content Providers, View System, Modification Manager, and others, which are built on top of the native libraries to provide rich and robust application frameworks. F. Applications. The top layer is where Android applications run. Apps use the frameworks and services provided by lower layers, facilitated by Android SDK tools and APIs. 2. Explain the activity lifecycle in Android. Answer. Understanding the activity lifecycle is crucial for creating efficient Android apps. A. Uncreate. Called when the activity is first created. This is where you should do all static setup, create views, bind data to lists, etc. This method is followed by onStart. B. OnStart makes the activity visible to the user and is followed by onResume if the activity comes to the foreground. C. OnResume called when the activity will start interacting with the user. At this point, the activity is at the top of the activity stack and captures all user input. D. OnPulse. This runs when the system is about to start resuming another activity. It's used to release system resources, handles, lightweight data, etc. It should execute very quickly, because the next activity will not resume until this method returns. E. OnStop. Called when the activity is no longer visible. It may be followed by either OnRestart, if this activity is coming back, to interact with the user, or by on Destrui, if this activity is going away. F. On Restart, called after the activity has been stopped, just before it starts again. It's followed by on Start. G. On Destrui, the final call that the activity receives. It can be called either because the activity is finishing someone called finish on it or because the system is temporarily destroying this instance of the activity to save space. 3. What are intents? Answer. In Android, an intent is a messaging object you can use to request an action from another app component. Intents are used for various tasks, including starting activities, starting services, delivering broadcasts, and communicating with content providers. There are two types of intents. A. Explicit intents specify the exact component to start and are typically used within the same application. B. Implicit intents do not directly name a component, but instead declare a general action to perform, which allows a component from another app to handle it. For example, capturing a photo with a camera app or sharing data with other apps. 4. How do you optimize Android applications? Answer. Optimizing an Android application involves several strategies. A. Performance optimization. 
Use tools like Android Profiler and Leak Canary to monitor app performance and memory usage, identify bottlenecks, and detect memory leaks. B. Battery life optimization. Reduce background services, use Alarm Manager to batch database updates, and prefer static over dynamic receivers, declared in the manifest. C. UE or UX optimization. Design responsive layouts with constraint layout. Use vector assets. And apply appropriate animations and transitions to enhance user experience. D. Network optimization. Compress data. Use caching mechanisms. And manage network calls effectively with libraries like Retrofit or Volley to minimize network usage and conserve battery. 5. What is a fragment? Answer. A fragment represents a behavior or a portion of the user interface in an activity. It has its own life cycle, receives its own input events, and can be added or removed while the activity is running. Fragments are reusable components that can be combined in a single activity to build a multi-pane UI and reuse in multiple activities. They live within an activity and contribute their own layout to the activity's view hierarchy. 6. Explain how you handle bitmaps in Android to avoid memory issues. Answer. Handling bitmaps efficiently is critical in Android to avoid memory issues. A. Bitmap sizing. Before loading a bitmap, determine the size needed for the UI component. And scale the image down to this size to reduce memory usage. B. Bitmap reuse. Use bitmap factory options in bitmap to reuse bitmaps if possible, which can significantly reduce the amount of memory used by the application. C. Memory caching. Implement a memory cache using LRU cache for bitmaps that aren't currently displayed but might need to be fetched again. D. Background thread load. Loop bitmaps asynchronously on a background thread. Using a sync task or an image loading library like Glide or Picasso to reduce UI thread load and avoid frame drops. 7. Describe the Android permission model. Answer. Since Android 6.0 Marshmallow, Android uses a permission model. That asks the user for permissions at runtime rather than at the time of installation. This model is designed to give users more control over their privacy. A. Normal permissions. These permissions do not directly risk the user's privacy and are granted automatically by the system. B. Dangerous permissions. These permissions could potentially affect the user's privacy and are requested at runtime. The user has the option to accept or deny the permission. C. Permission groups. Permissions are organized into groups related to similar functions. Once the user approves a permission in a group, the system automatically grants any additional permissions requested later that belong to the same group without prompting the user. 8. What is a service in Android and what types are there? Answer. A service is an application component that can perform long-running operations in the background and does not provide a user interface. There are two main types of services in Android. A. Foreground services perform operations that are noticeable to the user. For instance, an audio app using a service to play music. They must display a notification. B. Background services perform operations that aren't directly noticed by the user. These services have been more restricted since Android 8.0 to conserve system resources and battery. 9. Explain the concept of content providers. Answer. Content providers manage access to a structured set of data. They encapsulate the data and provide mechanisms for defining data security. Content providers are the standard interface that connects data in one process with code running in another process. They're used to share data between different applications, such as providing your app's data to other apps or accessing data from another app. 10. What are broadcast receivers and how do you use them? Answer. Broadcast receivers simply respond to broadcast messages from other applications or from the system itself. These messages can be system-defined like battery low, 
screen turned off, or custom defined. Broadcast receivers are implemented as subclasses of broadcast receiver, and each message is broadcaster as an intent object. Receivers can be registered either in the app's manifest file or dynamically in the code. Only works when the app's process is running. 11. What is Anner in Android? How can you prevent it? Answer. Anner stands for application not responding. Android displays an Anner dialog when an application has been unresponsive. For a long period of time, usually 5 seconds, because the main thread is blocked. To prevent ANDs. A. Perform long-running operations like Network I or O. File operations. Processing intensive tasks on background threads using Async Task, Handler Ed, or Kotlin coroutines. B. Use Intent Service for handling asynchronous, long-running services in the background. C. Make use of loaders or view model with Livadata to handle data loading operations. 12. Explain the use of the volatile keyword in Android development. Answer. In Android and Java in general, the volatile keyword is used to indicate that a variable's value will be modified by different threads. Declaring a variable volatile ensures that its value is read from and written to main memory, not just the CPU cache, and that operations on that variable are not reordered. This is useful for ensuring memory visibility and preventing thread catching issues in multi-threaded applications. 13. What is the difference between serializable and parcelable in Andro? Answer. Both serializable and parcelable are interfaces used for marshalling and unmarshalling Java objects. Serializable is a standard Java interface that is very easy to implement as it uses reflection to infer the serialization operations, but is relatively slow and can create a lot of temporary objects, which may lead to garbage collection. Parcelable is an Android-specific interface which requires explicitly implementing the serialization methods. It's much faster than serializable since it's optimized for use with Android's inter-process communication IPC and does not use reflection. 14. How do you implement secure data storage in Android? Answer. To ensure secure data storage in Android. A. Use shared preferences with the private mode to store sensitive data that other apps should not access. B. For data requiring higher security, use the Android key store system to encrypt data before saving into device storage or shared preferences. C. Use SQL Cipher instead of SQLite for encrypted database storage. D. Avoid storing sensitive data on external storage as it is easily accessible by anyone. 15. What is dependency injection? How is it implemented in Android? Answer. Dependency injection D is a design pattern used to implement IOC inversion of control, allowing for better modularization and making the code easier to manage and test. In Android, D can be implemented using frameworks like Dagger2, Hilt, or Coin. These tools help inject dependencies at runtime through the use of annotations, thereby decoupling the dependency creation from the business logic. 16. Explain the role of the manifest file in Android applications. Answer. The Andro Idmanifest ZML file serves as a central configuration file for Android applications. It declares the app's components activities, services, broadcast receivers, content providers, permissions, minimum API requirements, hardware and software features, and other metadata such as the application icon, theme, and description. 17. How can you update the UI from a background thread? Answer. To update the UI from a background thread in Android, you can use a. Run a new thread runnable. If you are in an activity, you can use this method to schedule your UI updates on the main thread. b. Handler. It's used to schedule messages or runnables to be executed at some point in the future on the main thread. c. View post runnable. Posts the runnable to the message queue of the thread that created the view. 18. What are loaders in Android? 
Answer. Loaders simplify data loading from a database or other sources while providing cursor management, query configuration, and robust handling of content provider change notifications. This results in better performance and a more responsive UI. As of Android P, loaders are deprecated in favor of the view model and Lividata components, which provide a more flexible way to handle data within the lifecycle of an app. 19. Describe how you would use view models in an Android app. Answer. View models are part of the Android architecture components and are used to store and manage UI related data in a lifecycle conscious way. This means that view models hold data that is required by the UI to show and survive configuration changes like rotations. In practice, you would use a view model to hold the data for your UI controllers like activities and fragments. By having the view model retrieve the data and then observing the data changes through Livid Data within the UI controller. 20. What is data binding in Android? Answer. Data binding is a technique that allows you to bind UI components in your layouts to data sources in your app using a declarative format rather than programmatically reducing boilerplate code. It supports both one-way and two-way data binding. It not only simplifies the code, but also eliminates errors caused by manual handling of UI component states, and avoids memory leaks by automatically removing callbacks when your app's fragments are destroyed. 21. What are intents in Android? Answer. Answer messaging objects used to request an action from another app component. There are two types of intents. A. Explicit intents specify the component to start by name the fully qualified class name. They are typically used for application internal messages. B. Implicit intents do not name a specific component, but instead declare a general action to perform, which allows a component from another app to handle it. 22. Explain the activity lifecycle in detail. Answer. The activity lifecycle is central to the way Android manages activities. It consists of several callbacks that handle transitions between different states. A. Uncreate. Called when the activity is first created. Used to perform one-time initializations. B. Onstart. Called when the activity becomes visible to the user. C. On resume, called when the activity starts interacting with the user. D. On pause, called when the current activity is being paused and the previous activity is being resumed. E. On stop, called when the activity is no longer visible. F. On destroy, called before the activity is destroyed. This can be due to the activity being finished or the system temporarily destroying this instance of the activity to save space. G. On restart, called after the activity has been stopped, prior to it being started again. 23. What is ADB and how do you use it? Answer. Android Debug Bridge ADB is a command line tool that allows developers to communicate with the device. ADB is used for various tasks such as installing and debugging apps and it provides access to a Unix shell that you can use to run various commands on a device. It's essential for Android development to perform device actions, like install and debug applications, view system logs, and perform various development tasks. 24. How do you handle different screen sizes in Android applications? Answer. Handling different screen sizes involves several strategies. A. Use of responsive layouts, utilize constrantlation, and linearlate, which allow creating scalable and flexible layouts. B. Density independent pixels DP. Use DP units when defining UI elements to ensure consistency across different screen densities. C. Size specific resource directories. Place different layout files and folders like layout small, layout large, layouts large for different screen sizes. D. Adaptive icons. Use adaptive icons so that Android can display different icon shapes across different device models. 25. What are the best practices for using threads in Android? Answer. 
Best practices for using threads in Android include A. Avoid blocking the UI thread. Any operation that may take time longer than a few milliseconds should be performed in a background thread. B. Use Android's handler ed for simple background operations that need to update the UI. C. A sync task, ideal for short operations that need to interact with the UI. D. Executors, use Java's executor framework for managing a pool of threads. E. Kotlin coroutines, in Kotlin, coroutines provide a way to handle asynchronous programming more succinctly and efficiently. 26. Explain SQLite in Android. Answer, SQLite is a lightweight, disk-based database that Android uses for data storage purposes. Android integrates SQLite APIs so that you can create, open, and manage databases. Developers define SQL schemas and data is stored in tables. Operations on the database are done through SQL queries, which allow for creating, reading, updating, and deleting data. 27. What is ProGuard used for in Android? Answer. ProGuard is a tool used to minify, obfuscate, and optimize bytecode in Android applications. It reduces the APK size by eliminating unused code and resources, renames classes, fields, and methods with semantically obscure names, and optimizes the bytecode. ProGuard also makes it difficult to reverse engineer the APK, increasing the security of the application. 28. How do you handle exceptions in Android? Answer. Handling exceptions in Android involves several strategies. A. Try catch blocks, used to handle exceptions and prevent the app from crashing. B. Uncaught exception drin, capture exceptions that were not caught by try catch blocks. C. Using third party libraries, libraries like Crashlytics to log uncaught exceptions and analyze them for bugs. 29. What are Android Jetpack components? Answer. Android Jetpack is a suite of libraries, tools, and guidance to help developers write high-quality apps easier. It includes components like Livadata and ViewModel for lifecycle management, Room for Database, Navigation for managing navigation seamlessly, Work Manager for background jobs, and many more designed to adhere to best practices. Reduce boilerplate code and speed up the app development process. 30. What is the role of the Ansevain Stancet method? Answer. Ansevain Stancet is a method used to store data within a bundle before the activity is destroyed. Like during configuration changes for example, rotation, or when the system is temporarily destroying the activity to save space. The stored data can be restored using onCreate or onRestoreAndStayStayStation methods, allowing the activity to resume its previous state. 31. Explain the difference between match parent and wrap content in Android layout parameters. Answer. Match parent. The view takes up as much space as its parent allows. It fills the available space in the layout. Wrap content. The view expands only to fit the size of its content. It wraps around the content without taking up additional space. 32. What is the view holder pattern and why is it used in Recycler View? Answer. The view holder pattern is used to improve the performance of Recycler View by recycling views. It caches the results of FindViewBide to avoid unnecessary calls thus making scrolling smoother and reducing memory consumption by reusing existing views instead of inflating new ones for each item 33 how do you handle background tasks in android answer background tasks in android can be handled using a a sync task for short-lived operations that require ui updates b intent service for long-running background tasks especially those that need to be queued C. Job scheduler or work manager, for tasks that need to be scheduled or run in the background, even when the app is not running. D. Threat pull executor or executors, for custom thread management and more control over background tasks. 34. Explain the difference between serializable and parcelable. Answer. 
both serializable and parcelable are used for object serialization. But parcelable is preferred in Android because it is more efficient. Due to its use of a custom mechanism for serialization that avoids reflection. 35. What is the difference between service and intent service? Answer. Service runs on the main thread of the application and is suitable for long-running operations that don't need to be executed on a separate thread. Intent service automatically creates a worker thread to handle asynchronous requests intents on a queue basis. It stops itself when all requests have been handled. 36. Explain the concept of content providers and when to use them. Answer. Content providers allow you to share data between different applications or access data from other applications. They are typically used when you need to share structured data with other apps, or when you want to centralize data access and encapsulate data management tasks. 37. How do you handle configuration changes in Android, such as screen rotation? Answer. Configuration changes like screen rotation can be handled using a. Ansevain Stancet to save data that should persist across configuration changes. b. Using ViewModel to store UE-related data that should survive configuration changes. c. Handling recreation of components in OnCreate and restoring the state from the saved instance state bundle. 38. What are the benefits of using Livadata in Android? Answer, a data is an observable data holder class that is lifecycle aware, meaning it respects the lifecycle of other app components like activities and fragments, and only updates UI components when the app is in an active lifecycle state. Benefits include automatic lifecycle handling, ensuring UI updates occur only when the component is in an active state and prevention of memory leaks by automatically removing observers when the lifecycle owner is destroyed. 39. Explain the purpose of the Fragment Manager in Android. Answer. The Fragment Manager is responsible for managing the lifecycle of fragments and handling their transactions, adding, removing, replacing, etc. It allows you to dynamically add, remove, or replace fragments within an activity at runtime enabling flexible UI designs and better modularization of the app. 40. How do you optimize the performance of an Android application? Answer. Performance optimization in Android can be achieved by a. Profiling the app using tools like Android Profiler to identify performance bottlenecks. b. Reducing overdraw by minimizing the number of views drawn on the screen. c. Using tools like ProGuard to minimize APK size and obfuscate code. D. Implementing efficient data catching mechanisms to reduce network calls and improve responsiveness. E. Optimizing UI layout hierarchies and using appropriate data structures and algorithms. 41. Explain the use of fragments in Android and when to use them. Answer. Fragments represent a portion of UI or behavior in an activity and allow for a more modular UI design. They are used to create reusable UI components and support flexible layouts, especially for larger screens like tablets. Fragments are recommended when you need to create multi-pane UIs, reuse UI components across multiple activities, or create dynamic and flexible UIs that can adapt to different screen sizes and orientations. 42. What is the role of the application class in Android? Answer. The application class is a base class for maintaining global application state. It's used to perform initialization tasks, manage application-wide resources like singletons, and handle application lifecycle events. Subclassing application allows developers to create a custom application class that can perform tasks such as setting up global configuration, initializing libraries, and managing application-wide data. 43. Explain the purpose of the action bar and toolbar in Android. Answer. Action bar. The action bar is a window feature at the top of the activity that displays important actions and navigation options for the current screen. 
It typically includes the app icon or logo, title, and action icons. Toolbar. The toolbar is a flexible widget introduced in the app Compat library that replaces the action bar and provides more customization options. It can be placed anywhere in the layout and customized with different views, icons, and actions. 44. What is the purpose of the Recycler view in Android? Answer. The Recycler view is a more flexible and efficient version of List view and Grid view used to display large datasets in a scrollable list or grid format. It allows for the efficient reuse of list item views using the view holder pattern, supports customizable layouts and animations, and provides better performance for handling large datasets compared to traditional adapter view classes. 45. Explain the difference between StartActivity and StartActivityForders methods. Answer. StartActivity used to start a new activity without expecting any result. Back. It's typically used for launching activities that don't require user input or for navigation within the app. Start activity forders, used to start a new activity and receive a result back from it. It allows the started activity to send back a result to the calling activity, which can then handle the result in the on active result method. 46. What is the purpose of the constraint layout in Android layouts? Answer. The Constraint Lady is a flexible layout manager introduced by Google as part of the Android support library to create complex layouts with a flat view hierarchy. It allows you to create large and complex layouts with a flat view hierarchy, making UI design and development more efficient. Constraint Layout is particularly useful for responsive UI designs that need to adapt to different screen sizes and orientations. 47. Explain the purpose of the Content Resolver in Android. Answer. The Content Resolver is used to access content providers and perform database operations on shared data such as contacts, media, files, and settings. It provides methods for querying, insert, updating, and deleting data, and allows applications to interact with data from other apps in a secure and controlled manner. 48. How do you handle permissions in Android applications? Answer. Permissions in Android applications are handled using the following steps. A. Declare permissions in the Android Manifest. ZML file. B. Request permissions at runtime using the request permissions method. C. Handle permission request results in the on request permission method. D. Check for and request permissions as needed before performing operations that require them. 49. Explain the use of async task in Android and its limitations. Answer. Async task is a class provided by Android to perform background operations and update the UI on the main thread. It's typically used for short-lived operations like network requests or database operations that don't require complex threading. However, a sync task has some limitations, such as poor support for cancellation and error handling, and is not suitable for long-running operations or tasks that need to be scheduled or executed concurrently. 50. What is the purpose of the Local Broadcast Manager in Android? Answer. The Local Broadcast Manager is used to send and receive broadcast messages within the same application process. It allows components within an app to communicate with each other in a decoupled manner without the need for inter-process communication IPC. Local Broadcast Manager is typically used for communication between different components within the same app, such as activities, services, and broadcast receivers. In summary, the 50 questions and answers discussed cover essential aspects of Android development comprehensively. They delve into topics like Android architecture, UI components, background task handling, data storage, permissions, performance optimization, advanced concepts such as Livadata and ViewModel, and inter-component communication techniques.
By understanding these concepts, developers can build efficient and user-friendly Android applications that adhere to modern development standards and provide a seamless user experience. For more exciting tips, tricks and more importantly, for valuable insights of interviews, please share, like, and subscribe to my channel. It has a lot of valuable information about various insights of interviews. It has a wide range of real-world portfolio projects of various technologies for interviews, and it has wide range of most asked interview questions and answers of various technologies like data science, SAP, AWS, DevOps, and full-stack web development, and more. That will be useful during interviews. It has a wide range of most asked interview questions and answers, and real-world portfolio projects of various technologies for freshers. For two to three years, experienced candidates, and for five or above years, experienced candidates to test their skills by knowing most. Ask interview questions and make themselves ready for interviews.